Hello everyone, and welcome back to Kira's Workshop. The year is almost over, and what a best way to celebrate it than with a Christmas collaboration. But this is not a regular collaboration, it's a mystery bug swap. I had the honor to be invited by my friends Barb from Oknara and Val from Valkyrie's World to this amazing project. Drawing the names randomly, each one of us got a partner with someone else to receive a box of materials to use it with the intention of sending them back with a finished doll. So, following this rule, I made a doll for Val, Val made one for Barb, and Barb for me. As for the theme, we decided to make this collaboration shine by using gold. All types of gold to be more precise. We took inspiration from the Rainbow Divas from Rainbow High, which followed the same color story being rose gold, yellow gold, and white gold. Val got yellow gold, so for today I'm making a golden girl ready to party. Let's see what materials I got in my box. First was this Monster High Venus doll some holographic golden fabric, a black tool with golden polka dots, some sparkling tool with embedded glitter, some golden cords, a Wonder Woman chest plate, chains, and a pair of blue thigh-high sandals. I really love Venus, but to be honest I wasn't feeling the green skin against the black and golden palette, so this was the perfect chance for me to change the skin color of a doll for the first time. Off camera I gave Venus a fairer skin complexion, you can still see the green neck, but we'll take care about that later. Off camera, I contoured and draw the eye shape as usual. And now I'm adding the brows with brown pastel. You know the deal by now. Apply the pigment with a stiff thin brush. And then clean them up with an eraser. Next, with red color, I'm lining the lips and once I'm happy with it, I'll fill them up. To clean the brows a little bit more and add dimension, I'll highlight with cream pastel. And also begin highlighting the nose. Off camera, I draw the outline of the irises, and with sienna, I'll color the tear duct. And later, add black liner to the eyes. For the makeup, I'm doing a black smoky eye with some gold. First, I'm using the brush from the brows to really pack the pigment, and then I'm using a softer one to blend the color. And also, I can't forget to add some color on the bottom lids. Since the paint I mixed for the face was looking a little bit grey, I really need to warm up the face with some blush on the nose, cheekbones, and some on the forehead using a fluffy brush. Add a new layer of sealant and continue packing up the shadow. Also, adding a new layer of sealant usually dulls down the pigment, so I'm highlighting the brow bone again. With my white chalk pencil, I'm adding some highlight on the inner corner and blend it with a brush up to the black shadow. Time for the eyes! I'm first coloring the outline of the iris with a dark blue up to the middle, and under it a lighter blue. Then fill everything with a baby blue. The white chalk pencil also needs to be layered, so I'm adding the first layer of the scleris. But her face needs more gold, so I'm applying gold nail powder all over the face with an eyeshadow applicator. Off camera, I draw the pupils, and now, using a silicone brush with a fine tip, I'm painting a cut crease with golden paint. These silicone brushes are really useful to paint fine details. With black pastel, add shadow to the eyes, concentrating the pigment on the iris, and less on the scleris, and finally the catch lights. And here's a little comparison between my Venus repaint and the original one. Honestly, I really love how her mold looks with a human skin tone. At this point I wasn't really sure about how much skin it was going to pick through the outfit, so I decided to paint a small part of the back. And since Venus's fingers are a little bit larger than the rest of the dolls, I changed them for a pair of Frankie hands. Now for the outfit, I use a hollow golden fabric to make a strapless catsuit using a pattern from DJ Rikiam on Etsy. I'll leave the link on the description box. Using the same pattern, I made a black top to go under the catsuit. And just to make things clear, this pattern is made for really stretchy fabrics. So now, first, I'm putting on the black top. And this is what I'm closing first with a simple stitch. Once done, I'll put on the catsuit, and off camera, I'll close it from the back using a ladder stitch. Since I want to put on some boots, to prevent the fabric to rise from the legs, I'll glue down the ankles using super glue. 
and I really need to press the fabric down for the glue to work. After that, I'm gathering the cleavage to make it a heart shape. I'm also stitching down the catsuit with the black top to prevent it from moving around. And here are the hands painted. I blush them with pastels, add a few details with color pencils, and also paint the nails black. If you know me well, you must be aware that I love giving my designs harnesses. So I made this small one to give just a touch of elegance. Sew it from the back. And now for the boots. I want them to blend with the catsuit as seamless as possible. To do this, I'm following the method I learned from Hexion. Using the same fabric, I'll sew it on the doll's leg, up to the ankle. Cut the fabric and leave a small hem. Turn the boot inside out and place it on the doll. Put on the shoe and add glue all over the shoe to cover it up with the fabric trying to make it as clean as possible. Once dry, I can cut the excess fabric guiding me with the platform. Off camera, I painted the platform with black nail polish to give it a shiny finish. Here are my boots, and to be honest, they turned out better than I expected. And now that the super glue is dried, you can see how the pants can no longer rise. So now I can put on the boots without messing them up. As you can see, the boots are almost perfectly blended, so the catsuit looks like one single piece. With the polka dot fabric, I cut two half skirts and sew them on the hips. Vol also sent me this diamond-shaped handbag, that I don't really know who is it from. After sanding it down just a little bit so that the paint sticks better, I'll add one coat of black paint first. Once dry, I'm painting it golden, because metallic paints always show up better on a dark surface. Here is my bag, and as you can see, I drilled two holes on the bottom. I'm using this tassel that Val also sent me, pass it through this metal shackle that I made, and insert it on the holes that I drilled. Glue that from the inside to secure it. And now I can assemble the bag. And here you go! Your perfect accessory for the party. But of course, it doesn't end here. We have to bedazzle it with a few rhinestones on the handle. And to finally cover that green neck, I made this high collar using black fabric and gathered lace. First, I'm sewing the fabric and the lace together. Done that, I can close it from the back. This should cover up the neck almost completely. I didn't want to paint the neck because it was more likely to peel off with the movement of the head. To add a pop of gold to it, I took this flat wire that I also use on the hair and as a bracelet, and put it around the neck in the middle of the collar. I made these earrings using some beads and golden hoops. Finally, I'll glue on some sparse rhinestones. They kind of blend with the catsuit, but when the light hits them, you can see tiny sparkles. And with this, she's done. I named her Ava. For no particular reason, I just like the name. I really love how she turned out, and I'm glad that I decided to go for the change of the green skin. As I said before, I believe Venus head mold looks gorgeous with a human skin tone. And talking about the color palette, well, black and gold never gets old. But I wanna know what do you think about her? Let me know in the comments. Since it was a mystery swap collab, we decided not to make a group picture. So if you want to see the rose and the white gold girls, go and watch Val and Barb's videos. The links to their channels are down in the description box. Special thanks to my friends for inviting me to participate in this amazing collaboration. And well, that's a wrap for today. As always, don't forget to like this video and join the workshop by subscribing to my channel. Click the bell to get notified about new videos. Also, follow me on Instagram at Kiros underscore workshop, where I post sneak peeks of my next projects. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next year. Kiro out.